Hey guys, welcome back for our restoration project. So today we're going to install a new carpet kit over the top of some of our hard work here. And we're going to try and do it in a way where it's not permanent or we do anything that uh, might be destructive in, in any way to some of the work we've done here. So what I want to try and do is install it in a way where we could get it out of there without any uh, underlying damage or any permanent glue fixtures uh, that would be seen over the top of our finish. So originally on this particular year, our side panels were uh, contact cemented in place and the uh, center section just basically sets in the middle and straps in at the uh, balance section there. So what I think I'm going to do here is we're going to take advantage of our side fender bolts and uh, washers and we're going to try and go in there and just select a few out. Um, it's not going to be any problem for our fenders. They're definitely not going anywhere. But uh, we're just going to secure it using those fasteners and hopefully that'll give us a nice finished look and uh, we'll be able to access underneath it uh, for any kind of show purposes uh, down the road. And then also we're going to be cutting a rubber mat that's going to sit down over the center of our gas tank here, kind of like a donut. And uh, the purpose of that is to uh, give some padding and some traction for our spare tire that's going to sit over the top of our gas tank. So originally when they coated these gas tanks, it was a rubberized coating. Um, it wasn't a sprayed on texturized finish like we have here. Uh, this looks real beautiful, but actually uh, the original gas tank served a purpose. And what that purpose was, was to add a rubber grip so that when you set the spare tire over the gas tank, uh, when you're turning and driving the car around, going over bumps, uh, the gas tank actually grips your tire and it's not throwing it all around in the uh, front of your trunk here. So what we want to try and do is replicate that grip somehow and I think a rubber mat is going to be ideal for that situation. So what we want is we want to put a rubber mat in there, set our tire in there, be able to drive the car around and not have our spare tire sliding around. And then just a couple other fun uh, small details in here we're going to do to hopefully close this up today and that should pretty much take care of the front section of the car. So let's go ahead and uh, Take a look outside, see what I've got laid out on the driveway. Um, I've got our carpet kits laying out there, warming up in the sun, trying to relax them so we can bring them in here and get them fitted. Let's go check them out and see what they look like. So taking a look at our uh, quarter inch rubber matting here for our spare tire first. So what this basically is, it's just basically a foam, rubberized, real sticky surface. I think it's gonna work out real good for us. It's just basically yoga mat uh, that we're using here for this. And it's plenty wide enough and long enough. Um, if we screw one up, we can always cut another one. Maybe got, looks like we'd be a two or three attempts out of this piece here. But uh, basically we're just gonna cut a donut out of that at the right dimensions, set it down in there over the gas tank, and hopefully that's gonna work and give us plenty of grip. And then looking at our new carpet kit, uh, kind of overlaid and sitting side by side with the original. Um, so I had this made up by our friends at Autos International. Uh, real nice cut pattern there. Looks to be very close to our original, so I don't think we're going to have any issues on our side panels here. Um, or we overlaid them on top of each other, and it seems to be real accurate. Also, our center mat here, um, same as the original, except for the battery area. You can see here we're notched out for the battery, so we'll have to do some notching just in that section there. But back here, everything looks to be looks to be. Uh, Pretty much in line and then they've also reinforced the back edge here doubled it up to kind of emulate the original here a little bit thicker in that area so just warming them up here in the sun till they get them nice and relaxed then we can work with them and uh, hopefully won't have any wrinkles in there you can see from our original this would be the original contact cement line going into the fender and uh, i don't have a problem contact cement in the carpet but i do have a little bit of a problem uh, contact cementing over the finished surface of our trunk area here. So uh, if I contact cement that, we're pretty much going to ruin the finish on everything in there. So what I plan on doing, all we really do is snap this over the strut there. Um, I'm just going to pull it tight, like so, um, and just find a couple of key spots where we can uh, punch through there with an awl, find the center of that screw there, pull that out, and then put it back in using the washer on top of it and that should work uh, plenty good to hold our side panels in 
and uh, give us the look we want. What we want to do is put it over the center of our strut and just kind of get it centered left or right. Make sure we're not over pulling one side or the other. So once we get uh, basically relaxed in the center, I think the best place to start with a screw is probably going to be right here. So we'll get that centered. Let me set this one on both sides and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so we got our first one set on both sides. I think that's going to work fine. Um, it looks like if we get one in the middle here and then one up front, I think that's really all we're going to need to keep that tight against the fender and pull tight. And that's going to be the same pretty much for both sides. Open it up pretty good. Okay, so we got everything secured here. Our right side looks pretty good and uh, overall appearance is fairly relaxed coming down the inside of the fender there. Also on our driver's side, not too bad uh, as far as a relaxed position. And we're plenty secure and plenty stretched out. The only thing I don't really like is how it's working with our battery here. So I've gone ahead and mocked up our battery and it looks like if this tucks behind, in here. Uh, we're going to end up bunching up here. Getting some, uh, some stresses in there. So I think the best thing to do, let's mock up the, uh, the tire, get everything worked out there so we can hold up our center section. And then let's see how that works with it. That way if we have to trim anything, we'll know exactly what we want to trim. Alright, so doing a couple practice runs first, trying to figure out our size here. So it looks like 13 inch center diameter and 23 and 3 quarter inch uh, outside diameter is going to work the best. And it looks like it might be a little bit offset in this uh, gas tank here. It looks like it hangs a little bit to the left anyways. So uh, let's set our platform up and cut our finished rubber. So taking a look at our tool here, I'm just using a piece of 3 quarter inch maple plywood for some backing. Uh, that way when I cut through it with the blade, I don't have any fray on the back side. And then I've made up this piece of aluminum uh, trim here and notched it and the idea is to set the blade in here and then pull that way we can swing a radius inside and outside and that should give us just what we want Alright, well I think that's going to work great for us. It's definitely going to uh, take care of any vibration with the tire to tank and then also uh, give us a little bit of grip. Ah, perfect. Yeah, I can feel that gripping. Really good. That's not going to go anywhere. Well, before we trim our carpet and cover everything up here, let's take care of one last little detail and uh, take a look at this fuel tank socket cap. So. On our previous video where we installed our fuel tank, I had reached out and asked if anybody knew um, where I could get one of these socket caps as mine was broken and uh, the new replacement part doesn't exactly look like this. I thought, uh, you know, pretty much going to be an impossible part to find, uh, but had quite a few suggestions and I really appreciate you guys reaching out. This particular one here uh, was recommended by Rafe in Belgium. Uh, managed to get that in here. It's in perfect condition. Even came with the screws on it. So we managed to get through this one. I appreciate all you guys out there uh, recommending a part and uh, even offering to take the part off your own car and send it to me to get through this uh, problem here. But uh, let's go ahead and put this on there and see what she looks like. Alright, moving on to our carpet now. So we're going to pull down over our tire 
and wrap around this area here. And I've seen this done uh, quite a few different ways depending on your year and depending on the type of carpet that came with your car. Uh, this particular one was uh, optioned with the Perlon. Uh, some of these have a weave type carpet. And some of these you have the uh, carpet going right over the battery section here. And I have not been able to find any good uh, pictures or historical reference which actually indicates uh, when they made this change here, whether it was uh, all the way over the top of the battery or notched around it. So there's our tape line. We'll start with that and then see if we need to take off a little bit more according to how it tucks in. So let's do one last finishing touch detail inside our trunk here and then after that I think we're 100% complete. So I managed to acquire some really cool looking hood strut decals. These are uh, Stabilis and date coded 866. I picked up three of them. We're going to put two on our hood struts and then we're going to put one in the engine compartment hood strut. Well, those look really cool. You can get these at Aussie Sales, and they have a couple of different date codes available. Uh, but definitely something cool for a nice finishing touch in your trunk. And engine compartment, too. And then finally, let's put a couple things in our finished trunk and see how she looks. So here we are with toolkit, travel bag, and jack. So our jack has been completely restored and back to new condition. Our toolkit here, this is the original toolkit and jack that came with the car uh, inside this toolkit here. Uh, I'm still working on a couple pieces uh, to get it complete. We're almost there, just missing like two pieces. Uh, we'll spend a lot of time on eBay rounding those up. And then I always like to go with a travel bag. Uh, comes in handy to have a towel to lay down on on the side of the road. For some reason you need to work on your car or jack it up. Uh, some jumper cables, some detailing products in there if you're going to a car show. Always nice to carry a few extra things. Well, there you go, guys. We're uh, finishing up another part of the car. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.